Hey friend, welcome back to Seed and Sparrow Homestead. If this is your first time hanging out, my name is Kelsey. I'm gonna take you along with me outside. Today, it is actually really beautiful outside. We've had some really nice weather here as of late. It's gonna be about 60 degrees and sunny. And we are just about halfway through March. So it's time to start preparing things, getting stuff ready for planting. So I'm looking at my kids out here right now. I can see them through the door and they have a chicken, which is slightly concerning. So I need to get out there. Um, but I always think I prepare pretty well, like the previous season for the next in like making sure things are cleaned up and I'm not going to have a whole lot of work to do in the spring and walking around out there. I'm like, oh man, I've got a lot I need to do to get this place ready for planting. And I need to definitely prepare some beds today. There's some seeds I want to direct sow. Um, we've got quite a few projects we're gonna work on. So let's get out there and let's get to it. Can you see how beautiful, bright blue the sky is? It's seriously gorgeous out here. So one of the things I do need to work on here soon <laughs> Is that right there um, every year I say I'm not gonna make it really messy and leave it that way and then every year it's really messy and I leave it that way so I have to work on that but let me turn the camera around and I'm gonna show you the in-ground garden space which is a little bit I don't know about a disaster but it's in need of assistance all right you're gonna hear road noise chickens and children so be warned. Um, this is the in-ground space, and as you can tell, it's not so defined as it was before. There's actual like beds in here. Um, we had some crazy flooding. This entire area was flooded um, a few months back now, like maybe two months. So everything is displaced. All the wood chips were like out of the yard over there. Um, we have some more wood chips that should be getting delivered soon, which will help kind of define the areas again. Uh, but I've got some weeds here that have come up that I need to work my way through. But one of the big projects today, it's going to take me quite a long time, is right here. So here is strawberry bed, which needs to be gone through. There's lots of dead stuff in there. But I didn't do a very good job of maintaining it last year. Things just got too busy and I allowed all of the runners to spill out. And now I have another strawberry bed, which honestly, like I'm not mad about. We eat a lot of strawberries. I want to save these, but I don't want them here in my walkway and in this bed. This is just not the area that I had planned for them. So we're gonna work on digging a lot of these guys up, making sure that we are being careful not to disturb the roots too much. And then we're gonna be transplanting them. And I'm also going to be saving some to give away to friends. So that is one big job we gotta do today. There's patty cakes. We are gonna work on this bed and that bed for sure. There's just a few weeds popping up in here. Uh, we've already topped these off with compost. I don't know about this one. This one might have, this one I need to put some compost on. But I've got some weeds and I've got some of the leftover corn stalks I have to yank out of here from last year. Um, there's a lot of rocks on the top of here. Wow, I don't know. That might have been from the flooding because over there, that was all flooded too and there's a whole bunch of gravel. So um, I need to work on these two spaces because we're gonna do parsnips and we're gonna do carrots here. And right now is the perfect time to be planting them. And then I gotta go through all of these beds and weed them. This is actually my asparagus bed here and here. So I haven't seen any little spears pop up yet, but soon, like here's a crown, an old crown, um, soon I should see some popping up through here. So I should really come through and weed this. And then over here is another strawberry bed and more runners on this side. And then if we walk around, more runners, more runners. So that's fun. And then I've got this disaster. Um, there's a few things in here I'm going to take out to um, freeze dry. I found this is chickweed, which has some great healing properties. Good for you here. Um, so I'm going to go through. I'm going to just make sure I'm not missing anything that we can actually use. And then everything else is getting ripped out. So we can prep this bed. And then over here, um, this needs to be prepped as well. So that's just this space. 
I've got to go up there to that space. And then if I spin you around slowly and I have a child yelling for me, hold on kiddo. I've got this whole space here too, which is honestly pretty, pretty much ready to go. We're going to do some weeding and then we're going to apply wood chips whenever they get here to this space. I ran inside to grab a box and a kneeling pad a box for the starvey runners we're going to dig up, but on my way back out, look, there's life, which is just so hopeful and exciting for all that's to come this season. So I've got some new leaves here on this rose bush. And then look at all of this life down here. These are all the bulbs we planted together. So I'm in this bed and that bed over there. There's probably about 300 between the two beds, maybe a little bit more even. There's tulips and daffodils and anemone. Um, what else is in here? There's some lilies, some allium, lots of fun stuff. I have to come through here and get all these leaves out at some point, but I'm not too concerned about that because right now it's probably a safe spot for some little critters, but uh, soon here. Lots of color in this space. So we're gonna start on these strawberry runners here. Probably gonna take me a good long while if I want to be careful and save them. Otherwise, I'd just come through here with like a tiller and be done with it. Wait for the truck to go by. Um, but my plan with this, I am going to transplant these to at least one of those small square beds in the back by the cottage garden. And then I think one of these um, four by eight beds is going to be another strawberry bed. And then I'll have three four by eight beds for strawberries. We eat a lot of them and I haven't quite produced enough for our fresh eating needs and also for preservation purposes. Um, and I like to share things too. So I definitely think it's warranted to cats rubbing up against the the tripod. Um, I think it's warranted to put in another strawberry bed. And then I also have like the small little beds over there in the front garden that has strawberries as well. But they didn't produce very well last year. And I just don't know if that's location staff. Or it. Um, sorry, I had to break up a fight. They were fighting over who got what toy in the sandbox. Um, but I'm gonna bring the camera down here and I'm gonna show you how I take one of these strawberry plants out. Um, and then I'm gonna get to work. Okay, so let's focus on this guy right here. So I'm just going to, now there's like, can you see that? Yeah, there's a few, like this is a plant, this is a plant, there's a little plant over here. I am going to mainly focus on these bigger, more established plants. Um, and then I might just have to come through here and get rid of all of these guys because it's truly, it's a ton of work. I mean, there's probably close to like a thousand plants. I don't have time to dig up a thousand plants. So um, I'm gonna go around all the edges here. And just make a cut into the ground around it. And then once I do that, I'll just lift up. And I mean, it's okay if you don't get all of the roots. You want to salvage as much as possible just so you don't shock them too, too much. So now it's out and I'm just going to take off. See if you can see some of the roots right there. They come up pretty easily. But I'm going to take off some of this dirt um, because I don't want this massive hole here and I don't need to take the dirt with me. But Fortunately, it is really compacted right now because we just had a ton of rain, but I'm just gonna go around, take off as much dirt as I can without hurting the roots. And then I'm just gonna stick this in the box here until I have enough. And then I'm just gonna go plant them in a different bed. All right, that's probably how I'll leave it. So you can see all their roots look beautiful. I don't think much broke at all. And then right in here, this is the crown. 
and I'm going to make sure I plant it right at that crown level there. So that's all there is to it. I'm just gonna go through and get approximately 50 of these. The nice thing about strawberries is once you have them planted in your garden, you won't ever have to purchase them again. They just continue to multiply year after year, and you can always replenish the older plants with the newer runners. So it's just a constant supply. It's really not hard to maintain. I just did a really poor job. It's very easy if you have them in a raised bed, because as soon as you see a runner creeping out over, you can just snip it off if you don't want them. Ladies are singing the song of their people right now. Here is an update on how much I, I've gotten done. That entire section over there was covered as well. So I did get all of that taken out. I got all of the weeds taken out from there and I worked up to here. And we've got that much more left to go. And here is how much I have already. I mean, there's gotta be close to 500, no lie. In here, it's insane. So soon we're gonna start replanting these because I don't want the roots to dry out too much. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna see if one of my friends is gonna be able to take any either today or tomorrow. If not, I might dig up a few more of these and take them along with me to church tomorrow and see if anybody wants them. But um, these may just be sacrificed. I hate saying that, but um, I don't have the time to dig them all up individually, so we might just till them or just bring in a big shovel and just start hacking away here because I need this, this bed freed up for planting. And I have more back in there on that side of the bed and on the other side that I could give away to. I'm thinking I'm gonna make that one the new strawberry bed and just have like one long row here of strawberries. That way, if I do want to cover them, sometimes I do that in the spring, um, summer because of the birds, they just get a little too greedy. Um, it'll be really easy to just cover one big long row here. So I don't think I'm gonna get quite as much done today as I had hoped. Um, it's so beautiful. We're going to take the kids out to dinner tonight um, to a local place that has some outdoor seating. Um, so I need to get some of these strawberries here planted and then I might drop some off at a friend's house as well. So I'm going to take the camera over there to that bed. I'm going to show you how I replant these now. Right there. That's the crown right where the plant up here meets the roots. You don't want to bury it any deeper than about right there. If you bury this too deep, it's just going to rot. So you can do this in two bays. Oh, I need my shovel here. So you can just dig a hole. Oop, moving my camera, sorry. And just stick the roots down in there, kind of zhuzh them around a bit and then backfill up to that crown, making sure that's level with this surface, or make a little bit of a hole again. And then we're gonna make a little bit of a mound in here, like this. This takes a little bit more time, but if you wanna do it, you can. And then you spread out the roots. And just kind of let it sit on there. So like the top of your hill is right about surface level. So that, that prevents your crown from getting buried too deep. And let me just back, oh, knock on the camera, sorry. Backfill around it. Right up to that crown. You do want to press kind of firmly. Make sure there's no air pockets down in there. And then... This guy is good to go. So it's the next day. Uh, I didn't get a whole lot done yesterday. Um, not near as much as I wanted to, but I got closer to what, you know, I needed to get done. So I only got this one bed here filled, but I got about 65 plants in here. And then my friend Heather, who I've spoken about before on the channel, 
Um, she and her family stopped in yesterday, and she took home, I think I, I gave her somewhere around 200 plants. Um, but I still have a ton left. Um, I asked a few people at church today if they would take any, and I had a few people say yes. So I'm going to take in um, some for church next week, but I don't want to do that too soon, obviously, and have the roots dry out. So I'll probably dig, you know, maybe 200 more of these up and um, wrap them in paper towels, like damp paper towels, and then take them into church. But I'm not going to do that until like next Saturday. So these are going to stay here for now. Um, I at least got another bed put together. So we're going to work on prepping the beds for my carrots and parsnips. And then I've got some birdies raised beds I need to build. Got some weeding to do um, and just some like general cleanup. Um, and then probably another day this week, I'll work on that greenhouse. So I think it's kind of comical. When you plant raspberries, you will have raspberries for all eternity and you will have them in every place you don't want them. And behind me, you can see the raspberry supports right there. Um, I have two rows of raspberries in there. Originally there were like eight canes and now they've spread into this bed and the bed here in front of me. And let me tell you, it's not a whole lot of fun to be going through and getting uh, raspberry runners out of here. Um, so, Word of advice, if I could do it all over again, I would just plant, you know, a specific berry patch all by itself in rows that I could just till on each side of those rows um, each year to keep them under control because pain in the hiney. See, here's one, here's one, there's one back here, and really hard to get everything out because they have these like long root systems. I'll try and get one out to show you. They don't run super deep but they just run a good distance um, and wherever you don't get some of that root up there's a good chance you're gonna have another another shoot pop up. So some that way. It just keeps on going. Yeah. So you can just see all the little shoots that we're gonna pop up along there. Get rid of those guys. So to prep these beds here, I always add compost each season. I like to mix that in with some all-purpose fertilizer and then anywhere I plant a root crop, I always add in some bone meal as well to aid in a healthy root development. To be perfectly honest, it's taking me a while to get excited for the garden this year. I've just had a lot on my mind and my plate with all of the health stuff I've been going through and life stuff um, and honestly just dreading some of these tasks that I had to get done like taking care of these strawberry runners and the raspberry shoots. There were so so many and I still have a lot of work to do there and just maintaining them. I didn't get any footage of it but there were like hundreds of raspberry shoots up in the front garden that I worked at but um I'm finally starting to feel excited about the garden again. Um, we'll talk about my health and what's going on there a little bit later to give you some insight. Um, but I finally have some breakthroughs there and I feel like I can leave that in the past and move on and look forward to the garden this year. This bed's done and that bed's done. So we're gonna do parsnips in the back here. And this whole bed here is going to be carrots. This is a 4x10. That's a 4x8. These, this whole trellis here, it needs to get taken down because I'm not doing tomatoes here this year. So that area is prepped. I'm going to plant those probably tomorrow. But right now, I'm trying to focus on the things that need to get planted ASAP. So some of my root crops and peas. I want to get this bed weeded and prepped this bed in that corner up there along this trellis here. We're going to be doing 
a row of peas and then we're gonna move up there. I'm gonna plant some more peas along those front two trellis up there. So right here I found something. I found two clumps of lemon balm. This self-seeded last year and I kind of forgot about it till just now. And it's actually good that it's here because I didn't start any from seed. Uh, now, lemon balm can be kind of invasive. It will just take over a bed. I'm pretty sure it's in the mint family. Um, but it's a lovely herb, um, great in tea. I'll often have this with like chamomile or lavender or with some nettle. Um, sometimes, like I'll just mix it in honestly with everything just for the flavor because a lot of herbs are just kind of earthy in flavor. So this gives it a nice lemony flavor, but it's very calming. Um, it will relax. Um, it can help with sleeplessness, um, anxiety, all sorts of stuff. So it's a good thing to have in the garden. So I'm going to find some pots here. I'm going to put these in the pots just to control it a bit more. So this year I have really upped the amount of medicinal herbs I am growing. I think it's somewhere around 30 ish. Some I've had growing in my garden for a few years now, but I've added at least somewhere between 15 and 20 this year. But I'm trying to take advantage of whatever I can find growing in my yard, as well as foraging around um, the community. There are some different parks and trails we can go on. Um, it's something that Matt and I have developed a passion for. We've both been studying herbalism, and it's a fun thing that we do together. So we're really looking forward to going foraging, and we'll bring you along with us for that. In starting my own home apothecary and sourcing herbs online, I'm finding that some are just really hard to get a hold of. So I want to have as much growing in my yard as I possibly can. Yet again, it is another day. I meant to like film an entire video in one day, but that just doesn't happen a whole lot anymore. You know, moms of young children, you understand that and you just have to give yourself grace and you know, the things that we could have accomplished in a day's time now take an entire week, but it's okay. We're getting there. Um, it's very cold outside today, so um, and very windy. I can't really film out there today. Um, I just, honestly, I don't want to be out there. It's It's uh, been drizzling on and off. So I brought my, these are the birdies beds um, I got from Epic Gardening. I am an affiliate with them. They did send these to me, so I'm going to give these a try. I do also have um, a few Vigo garden beds. Um, and I think you say it, Vigega. I like options and I think so far they've all been great. I have no doubt these are going to be great too. So full disclosure, um, I was sent these, but, um, I'm going to assemble them today with you. They're very well packaged. Uh, this is super thick cardboard and there's some like heavy duty glue going on here. So I gotta get these opened up. We're gonna build them together. And I figured while I am doing this, I'll give you an update on my health. I know a lot of you are like invested in the, in the story now. Um, and I'll let you know what's going on there. Finally got it open. So I picked, these are two round beds. I'm gonna put up in the front garden where I'm planning to put a whole lot of my medicinal herbs and I also ordered some currant plants and a gooseberry plant that I might put inside of these. So I'm gonna start getting these together, but let's have a chat about my health. So to recap, this is just addressing what's been going on in my face, not like my gut health and everything else, all the other issues I have going on. At some point, I'm going to put together like an in-depth video on my health struggle journey, um, which has been going on for the last six years. I've been struggling with chronic illness. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much an open book and just ensuring the little tidbits I have, so many of you have 
express the same issues and you know just concerns over your health it's amazing how many people are having gut issues so if I can be of any help or you know just solidarity in what we're experiencing I am perfectly happy to do that so it's just it's a lot and I have to sit down and like write things out and I just haven't gotten around to it yet so that I will do in the future but this is just addressing what I've got going on in last side of my face um, to recap, uh, around Christmas, came down with some sort of sickness, turned into, um, it settled into my chest and then into my sinuses and became a full-blown respiratory infection. Thought it was getting better, it kind of started to go away for a week and then it flared up again. And then when it flared up, it lasted like another two to three weeks. And um, I started dealing with like just a lot of sensitivity. It was only the left side of my face ever, the left um, sinus cavity. So a um, lot of pressure in through here, frontal sinus, maxillary sinus, um, tenderness in my teeth, into my ear, down you know, into my neck, my lower jaw. And um, I wasn't really getting any answers from like urgent care or anything else. Um, after that second bout of sickness, I started feeling like a hard lump right in here. Um, and I thought at first it was like a retained mucus cyst that kind of happens just from all the inflammation. So um, I just started throwing like everything I knew to do naturally and holistically, all the herbal stuff and some over the counter stuff, just trying to get the inflammation down that hopefully that, you know, would release didn't happen. So I got a referral into um, an ENT, an ear, nose, and throat doctor. And when he examined it, the, you know, the best he could come up with was either a subcutaneous, subcutaneous nodule or a cyst. Just, just kind of what I was thinking. So he wanted me to do some meds and then come back if it wasn't better to do a CT scan. So let's rewind a little bit back in January when I was dealing with this sickness. I went into the dentist um, to get this area checked, just to make sure it wasn't being caused by an issue with the tooth. So last year, February of 2023, I um, actually had a tooth abscess. I was dealing with another sinus infection, February of that year. And this tooth, it didn't have any decay. However, it had a filling, an old one, from like at least a decade ago, if not 12 years. Um, that was somewhat close to the nerve and all of the pressure from that sinus infection aggravated that tooth, pushing on it, um, and it flared the nerve and my tooth abscessed at the root. One of the most painful things I've been through and I have given birth unmedicated. It was absolutely terrible. So we got that infection taken care of and because that tooth was fine, there was no, um, no decay. I work with a biological dentist, so they um, address everything holistically, you know, what's best, best for your whole body. I mean, he wanted to save the tooth if at all possible. So he's like, we're going to keep an eye on it. There's no infection, there's no decay. So let's just see how it holds up. So I went in this January when I was dealing with that sinus infection to check out this tooth because it was so close to all of the issues I was having. And we took an x-ray, he did a bunch of tests on the tooth. I still had perfect, you know, sensitivity feeling in that tooth. And the x-ray didn't show any infection. That was in January. So fast forward, um, while I'm, right after I did the ENT appointment, I had a routine dental cleaning. And the hygienist asked me if there were any concerns I had, and I said, I'm still dealing with this thing here in the side of my face, and now I feel this, this hard bump there. Um, and she looked at it, and she kind of raised an eyebrow, like, that's not like a typical abscess or anything, you know, we've dealt with before. It's very high up, like, it's way almost at the very top of my gum line, like, where it meets the sinus cavity. Um, she's like, well, I'm gonna have the dentist look at it. So. He came and he looked and he did another like eyebrow raising moment. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So we took an x-ray and he did some more testing on the tooth, like cold sensitivity and pressure and tapping a whole bunch of stuff. Um, it was like hit or miss whether I was feeling things. 
And then when he looked at the x-ray, he could compare March's x-ray from January's x-ray. And there was definitely something going on. Um, and it looked like the nerve, the nerve was dead. Uh, so, uh, it seemed that this past sickness and infection just flared that issue again, and it progressively got worse and it wasn't picked up on that first x-ray because it wasn't big enough to be picked up yet from what he could see. So, um, the infection was a silent one he said, and it shows the path of least resistance, which was into my cheek cavity. Um, and so the cyst is actually an abscess. It's just filled with infection, which is lovely. So that is that. The tooth is causing the issues, um, recurring issues, and this silent infection is causing a host of other issues. So I'm getting it taken care of this Friday when you are watching this video. So this part might be a little bit controversial and I'm not looking for opinions, honestly. If so you, you don't have anything nice to say, please refrain from saying it or I'll be deleting comments. So uh, when it comes to my health, um, I tend to be a bit of a rebel and choose things that um, don't really go along with, you know, like the mainstream stuff. Um, I tend to be more natural and holistic and knowing that there's always a place for modern medicine intervention. Absolutely. Um, but I don't always choose that as my first resort. I try and do everything naturally if I can. So with that said, um, I don't love root canals and I've done a lot of research on that and not just like a quick Google search or just taking someone's word for it. I've done a lot of research and I'm working with a biological dentist. Um, so he is looking at everything from a holistic standpoint, how my dental health is affecting the rest of my body. So I have a root canal and I have regretted that decision ever since I got it done and it has caused me a lot of issues. Um, it's still sensitive to this day, still flares up every once in a while. Looks fine on an x-ray, but it causes me issues. Um, and prior to getting that root canal, so I actually got that three days after I had Eleanor. I cracked that tooth in labor with her because I was clenching, biting down is so hard. My tooth shattered. So I had to get a root canal three days after giving birth, which was traumatic in its own right. Um, but anyways, ever since I got that, I started having health issues. That's when my health started declining. Before I had Eleanor, before I had this procedure done, this root canal, I was fine. I had no health issues. Like nothing was presenting itself. Um, I'd say I was healthy. So that has always been in the back of my mind that maybe it could be a root cause, maybe um, it could just be contributing um, if there's like a silent infection going on there. I know there's like certain x-rays you could do, I think it's called a cone beam, um, very expensive, but you it shows different things if there's like a silent infection going on. So um, with that and just the knowledge I have gained surrounding root canals. Now, if you're perfectly healthy, sure, maybe you'll be just fine with the root canal, but I'm not perfectly healthy and I don't want to do that to myself again even if that means losing the tooth and my dentist is on board with me um my body doesn't always respond to those invasive procedures well so I'm gonna get it extracted and I'm not <laughs> I'm definitely mourning the loss of a tooth it's my first extraction um besides my wisdom teeth but I was I was knocked out for that. This one, I'm gonna be awake and aware of what is going on. So I am happy that we figured out what's going on and I am hopeful that once this tooth is out and this whole issue clears up, it'll allow my body to focus on healing the other areas that need healing. Um, so while I'm happy to figure that out, I am definitely mourning <laughs> the loss of a tooth. I mean, nobody wants that. Um, I'm just trying to do, make an informed decision um, for what is best for me 
health wise. Um, I have always struggled with my dental health um, my whole life. And I've had more cavities filled than I'd care to admit. And that's not from lack of taking care of my teeth. I've taken really good care of my teeth. <laughs> when I was just at the dentist to get my teeth cleaned, there was nothing really to be done. Um, but I know some of it is genetics at play. And also, um, in the last, the last six, six and a half years with, you know, my health kind of declining in certain areas and the gut health struggling, I know I've been dealing with malabsorption um, and not getting the minerals and the nutrients that my body needs. And when that happens, it starts to pull minerals and nutrients from other areas teeth being one of them. And then of course, pregnancy and breastfeeding can also deplete your minerals. I want to say, um, somewhere around 10% of your mineral stores go to baby. Um, so, uh, I've had a lot of issues flare up in the last six years that I am, I have been addressing slowly. So this is just one more one more step closer to being able to heal. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on. Next time you see me, I will be one tooth less. <laughs> You're not really gonna notice it. It's like I said, it's a back molar. Um, I'm thankful that it's not a front tooth. Um, and you're not really going to see it unless I'm like cackling, which I do from time to time. But you know what? It is what it is. It's real life. It's something I'm, I'm dealing with and I know other people have too. And I hate that there's like a stigma around dental health. Like if you're missing teeth or if you have cavities or something, like it's just, you know, people think you don't take care of yourself. Like there's lack of self-care there. And that's just not always the case for some people. So um, if that's you and you deal with dental issues. Hey, this is solidarity. Um, but anyways, that is what is going on. Does anybody else find this super satisfying? I love it. that I noticed this is my first time putting together one of the birdies beds and sorry my fingernails are dirty I was just digging in the dirt um is the nut and the washer are one solid piece which is really nice um instead of dealing with them being separate this is the first metal raised bed I have found that has them together which is I mean it's little things for me make the process just go a bit smoother so like I said, this is a round one. I'm just gonna start putting all these together. It usually takes longer than I think it's going to, so I'll check in in a moment. We got one together. It's a little bit bigger than I remembered it's supposed to be. Um, so, I'm not so sure it's going to fit where I had intended on putting it. Because I'm eating strawberries. So I know. One bed. Done. So that is the last thing I got done for the garden this week. The weather turned back to winter and it was bitter cold outside mixed with rain and just wasn't up for that. So I got the beds put out here. I'm not sure this is where they're staying because you can see... There just isn't quite enough room, very narrow pathways to get around them, and it just seems a little bit too, too um, overcrowded for my liking. So I may have to rethink some things. I also have two more Vigo beds coming soon. I'm debating changing some things up. We shall see. But that is all I have for you this week, friend. In the coming weeks, I'm so excited to see some color pop up and get this space ready for planting. Last frost date is about seven weeks out, and I'm 
I'm officially getting excited and I hope you're excited to come along with me too. Thank you so much for hanging out. You have a blessed day and I will see you next time. Take care.